While many know Michigan for its Great Lakes, those who live in the state know to travel north for its serenity. At the heart of the state is the town of Grayling, and a short drive from Grayling lies Hartwick Pines, an old growth state forest that welcomes visitors from all over to witness its natural beauty. In the late 1800s, you know, it's the, the height of the white pine logging era, most of our great white pine old growth was cut. They did that because they owned that land and it was a way to make money. There was no regard for the wildlife, the soils, the other forbs or wildflowers or plants that grow on the ground. It was theirs for the taking. So there was an active logging camp here that we know about in 1893. They had just cut most of what was large and would make them enough money. We've learned now through science and through forest management techniques and silviculture that you should manage the forest appropriately. We're looking for the future. We want to have wood products into the future. We want to have trees to appreciate for our kids and our kids' kids in the future. In 1927, that is when Karen Hartwick purchased this land to donate to the state to be a state park. It's unique because it's the last remaining area of old growth white pine dominated by those, those coniferous species left in Michigan. We have individual old growth trees an old growth forest, Porcupine Mountain's full of old growth forest, but it's a mixture of hardwoods and hemlock versus what we have here, which makes it super unique. It's true. Hartwick Pines is an incredible sight to behold. In today's world, a forest mostly untouched by man is a true gift. Hartwick Pines is a place that allows us to get away from our hectic city lifestyles and perhaps even learn a thing or two from people like Hillary and Craig. However, while we visited the park, we could not help but notice an abundance of logging being done in the surrounding area. Hartwick Pines is one of the main attractions in Grayling, and seeing these clear-cut forests was gloomy to say the least. Though, perhaps we weren't seeing the full picture. Now we do clear-cut, and, and that's understandable, especially here in, in Crawford County where the soils are very poor, um, jack pine is another species that we clear cut a lot, and that's generally for the Kirtland's warbler nesting areas. Many other species of uh, reptiles and amphibians, insects, rare plants, rare birds besides the Kirtland's warbler, uh, as well as mammals, utilize these jack pine. <clears throat> jack pine has what's called a serotonous cone. Its, it's cone is closed up, covered with a waxy coating. It needs to be over 200 degrees before that waxy coating melts off the cone opens up and the seeds drop out and then they regenerate more jack pine because we're running out of room for houses and because we've got so much state land and federal land, people build their homes in jack pine forests and jack pine like to catch on fire. So we suppress as much wildfire as we can, but we need the wildfire to regenerate the jack pine. The method that we've done now to help the Kirtland's warbler and to be able to remove those trees to get new young ones is we clear cut them and then furrow it with the machine and then hand plant back to jack pine several years later. So a lot of the areas that are in, found in Crawford County have been clear cut and it's either aspen or jack pine. So forest management is really difficult to get the public to accept in Crawford County, but it's based on science, not based on, let's see what we can cut today kind of thing, you know, big difference. While things may seem bleak on the outside, Craig was adamant to us that clear-cutting was important. Perhaps we were a little too quick to jump. While Hartwick Pines is under protection from the state and the clear-cuts are necessary, the surrounding forests aren't completely safe. Camp Grayling's 
bombing and artillery ranges are really close to us and there's a lot of jack pine, which is a fire prone species. So when we have dry summers, there are forest fires that pop up. Um, you know, thankfully it's been many, many years, uh, decades since a fire's gotten like, dangerously close to uh, the park and our old growth, but it's always a fear. Camp Grayling, a military base just down the road from Hartwick Pines, has proposed an expansion of 162,000 acres. What's worse is the way in which that same military treats the forest. We went to town, which is going up Portage Creek Road, um, in the morning on Sunday at about 10 o'clock or something, past a whole bunch of uh, big, giant troop haulers parked all along the side of the road and a bunch of, of army guys all out of the trucks walking around by the landing up river with their guns all out um, and blowing up boats. And I have met Colonel uh, Myers before who runs the army camp. So I called him and I said, you know, what's going on on Portage Creek? You got army people all over the place. They're not supposed to be by the water. At least that's what we understood. He had no idea what I was talking about. He said, I don't know. Um, I don't even know where Portage Creek is. I don't know why we'd have people out there. And he said, I'll, I'll take care of it. You'll never see him again. Okay. So we came home and we're sitting out on the porch, the deck, at about four o'clock. And coming around the bend over here was a blow up army boat with seven guys in it. And then another one and another one and another, there was eight of them. And they kept going, they just kept going by, going down river. And we got movies of, of that, we got pictures of that, uh, and that's where this all ended up. We sent uh, all that stuff to the, the, new, the uh, television, and then it was on the news. People living in the area are concerned about how the DNR would police the area. Well, those concerns grew recently when photos were posted online showing soldiers in a non-training area. Early Sunday evening, Gary and his wife were sitting on their deck along the Manistee River when soldiers in large rafts came floating by. Bear Lake Township trustee Jim Knight questions how the DNR will be able to effectively police the 162,000 acres of additional land. I have, I have an, any idea how they could possibly have any oversight. They would need over 100 people uh, in DNR personnel to oversee something, that, and that's just unrealistic. They called it a giant uh, customer service nightmare. Well, that's kind of what it was, so. Despite the threat of the military taking even more land around the area and deforesting even more than it's already been done, Hartwick Pine stands as a beacon of hope, a refuge for those who want to get lost in the woods in a forest that many have fallen in love with. I come to work here, and as you know, as you guys drove in, surrounded by trees, there's birds everywhere, there's wildlife. People have been coming here forever. I've got pictures of me and my sister when we were kids, um, walking through the trails with, with my parents. And there's pictures of my dad and his brother, my uncle, um, down at the logging museum, black and white pictures. People have experienced this park for a long time, and I think that's an important continuation with families where mom and dad saw the benefit of this when they were kids, and now they want their kids to experience it as well. And eventually they're gonna have kids and those kids will be here too.